also is broken down. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you just allow me just a few minutes, amen. The preacher's already preached. So I'm just going to talk a little bit, amen. Just a, just a little bit of history. Is that all right if I just give some, just a little history of what's going on here, amen. Uh, when the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem, they exiled almost everyone from the city and the region. For 70 years, somebody say 70 years. 70 years. Jerusalem was a ghost town. Uh -huh. With the potential to end up like many ancient cities. All right. Completely forgotten except to history. Now when the Jews were exiled to Babylon, they began to make homes for themselves there. They settled down and, and many still followed the God of their fathers, but, but they did it from Babylon. All right. With no desire to return to the land God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. And some of these faithful Jews were raised up to places of prominence uh -huh. in the governments that they were exiled to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people like Daniel, Shadrach, uh -huh. Meshach, yeah. and Abednego. Yeah. Hallelujah, praise God. Yes, Even Esther was made queen in the courts of a Persian king. Yeah. But after, after, somebody say after. Yeah. After 70 years of captivity in Babylon, they were given the opportunity to return to their homeland. Yeah. The promised land. And in the days of Ezra, they rebuilt the temple, but the walls and gates of the city had been allowed to remain a mess of shattered ruins. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before this, citizens of Jerusalem had, they had tried to rebuild the walls, but they had failed. In Ezra 4, Verses 6 to 23, we see that some 75 years before that they tried to reveal the walls. But uh -huh. were stopped by their enemies. Uh -huh. Watch this. Near my lived in Houston, the capital city of the Persians, and, and he lived in the citadel. That, that is the fortified palace of the Persians. Yeah. Right away, we know Nehemiah is someone that's important. Yeah. Living in the palace of the king of Persia. Yeah. I heard my brother Law said he, he was a cupbearer. Yes, yes, uh, he was a wine taster. He, yeah. was a, he was a food taster yeah. for the king because at that time they, they had a, a assassination attempts. Yes, right. And the means at that time was poison. Yeah. Uh, so you know if, if Nehemiah must have been okay because he's still around. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there is the providence are in great affliction and reproach. That's the third verse. The way of the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Yeah. Uh, Nehemiah said, I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. Yeah, right. Nehemiah's body was in Persia, but his heart and his interest was in Jerusalem. Yeah. Right. 1,000 miles away. Yeah. He wanted to know from those returning how the people in the city was 
do we? Uh -huh. We might think that an important man like Nehemiah had more important things to think about than a distant city. He had never been, he had never even been to Jerusalem at that time. Hey. Did y'all know that? Uh, yeah. Hallelujah, praise God. And the people that he had mostly never met. Yet because his heart was for the things of God, his heart was not on himself, but on others. The news that he received was not encouraging. Uh, the people were called survivors. This, this was not a hopeful title. Hallelujah. They were in great distress and reproach. And the walls of the city itself were broken down. And the city gates were burned with fire. The bad state of the people and the bad state of the city walls were intimately connected. Why? Because in the ancient world, a city without walls was a city completely open and vulnerable to the enemy. They had no defense, no protection at all. An unwalled city was always a town with nothing valuable in it. If there was anything of value in an unwalled city, it could be stolen easily. Because there was no defense. Somebody say defense. Yes. To stop it. All right, Those living in unwalled city lived in constant stress and tension. Yes. Uh, they, they, they never knew when they might be attacked and uh, brutalized. Yes. Every man lived in constant uh, fear for his wife and his children. Yes. The temple could be rebuilt, but never made beautiful. Uh -huh. Why? Because anything valuable uh -huh. will be taken easily. Yes. No wonder the people lived in constant distress, right. in constant uh, uh, disgrace. Uh, they living on survivors. Uh, on. Hallelujah. God has more for us uh, than to be mere survivors. God not only wants us to be conquerors, but more. He wants us to be more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Well, that's what I said. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down. I sat down and I wept and mourned certain days and, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Hallelujah. He said, I sat down, I sat down, I sat down, and, and when I sat down, Pastor Thurman, I wept. I wept, I cried. Hallelujah, I cried. I wept. Nehemiah's immediate reaction was extreme. He didn't just feel bad for Jerusalem and its people. Right away, there was no strength in his legs, missionary. So he sat down when he heard the news. Hey, Hallelujah. I lost my strength. When I think about my, 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 my people, I, I think about those that I love, those that I care about. I, I, just, I just had to sit down. My brother, you all already said, that was on L. Anybody heard bad news? Yes. Amen. That knocked you off your feet. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you had to just sit down. Yes. And not only did you sit down, you began to cry. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because of the circumstance that you had gone through. Yes. Hallelujah. He sat down and he wept. His strength in his legs was gone and he began to cry. And then after he began to cry, he began to moan, oh God, oh God. Anybody ever done that before? Oh God, why is this happening to me? 
Come on, boy. Why? Come on, come on. Why? Am I going through this? The preacher's already testified and preached. It's because of the opposition that you have to go through. Yeah, no. uh, that's it. We already heard the message. In order to get to you, you got to go. You got to go through. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 He began to weep and to mourn. The Bible said that he mourned for many, many days. We don't know exactly how many days, but many days is more than one and more than two. Uh, some people in there still in mourning. Thank you, Jesus. But can I tell you something? God was going to use Nehemiah to do something about the situation. But first, God did something in Nehemiah. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah, Any great work of God begins with God doing a great work in somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. So I was fasting and, and, and praying before the God of heaven. No. Nehemiah's reaction went beyond an immediate emotion. Many times uh, a concern will come over us and then quickly pass. How many times we've gone to homecoming services and, and we always say, we need to get together before this happens. We get caught up between the emotions. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, yeah, let's get together, y'all. We're family, but we got to get together. Thank you, Jesus. Days go by and months go by and years go by. And we haven't heard or seen anyone at all. So it quickly passed. But can I tell you something? But if it is from the Lord, he will abide and grow and, and the burden will remain until the problem that prompted the burden is, hallelujah, solved. Somebody say solved. I know y'all not going to lie used to this preaching like this, but uh, I'm going to take you somewhere in the middle. Uh, I feel like hey, in my spirit. I'm going to say, hey, let's go. But we should know as well what Nehemiah did not do. He did not complain. He did not whine or see who could fix the problem. He immediately did what he knew he could do. And what was that? Anybody got a clue? Pray. Are there any prayer warriors in this house? Thank you, Jesus. I believe uh, El Darnell mentioned it. Praise God. When, when, when trouble rise, when trouble come, what do you do when trouble come? Do you run and hide? Or do you fall on your knees and say, ah! Jesus. Jesus. 
to turn to. Thank you, Jesus. Not just someone, but God himself. And we are not just subject to the way the wind blows. But God can provide the plan. He can provide the redemption. And, and he can provide the success that we need. Watch this. I'm just about through, missionary. Oh, I'm just about through. But can I tell you something this evening? Where, where's Brother Melvin at? Because I'm about to warm up right about now. Yeah. Oh, you got me. You got me. You got me. All right. Huh? Reading about Nehemiah is good, Sister Irene. Reading about Nehemiah is good, Sister Esther. Reading the room. I like to do that. Ah, hallelujah. I'm going to be like you when I grow up. Thank you, Jesus. Reading about me and mine is good. But can I tell you something? When you have your own story. Oh, when you have your own story. This is my story. And this is my song. Praising the Savior. All day long. I thank God. For this word tonight. Why? Because it came at the right time. Thank you, Lord. Rebuilding in spite of opposition with the remnant that you have. Thank you, Jesus. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah, God. When I got the news about this message, Pastor Harden called me on Wednesday evening. Yes, he did. But he didn't know that I was shut in at the church since Tuesday night. Thank you, Lord. He called me with the subject. Thank you, Jesus. Rebuilding. Rebuilding. In spite of the opposition. Thank you, Lord. I begin to read about Nehemiah. Yes. Heard about Nehemiah and the things that he done. I got inspired about Nehemiah. Yes. Nehemiah was a praying man. Yes, he was. Thank you, Jesus. He wasn't a prophet. Thank you, Jesus. He wasn't a preacher. Hallelujah. But he was a man. A man of God. But can I tell you something? Thank you, Jesus. As I was in that shut-in. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. I was on Wednesday. And I had been praying all night. Thank you, Jesus. Got my little napkin. Start studying my word. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Talk to my brother-in-law. He prayed for me while I was going through that. Thank you, Lord. He said, Lord, when he prayed for me, I can't stand him. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Lord, put him on the floor and let him out. Stretch him out. Thank you, Jesus. That didn't happen on Wednesday night. Thank you, Jesus. But can I tell you something? I came out of the shut-in on Thursday morning. Thank you, Jesus. I hadn't stretched out just yet, but I was feeling good in my spirit. I was going to mother bless. I don't know, mother missionary. Thank you, Jesus. I was going to stay in until 6 o'clock. Somebody say 6 o'clock. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. So about 5.30, I got on my knees. And I know I was getting ready to get up out of there. Hallelujah, God. But then what you did, that thing wrapped in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Rebuild in spite of opposition. And I begin to think about the things that I've been through while we on this journey. I begin to think about 
my wife uh, while we on this journey. Uh, talking about rebuilding uh, with the remnants that you have. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, somebody don't know. Uh, somebody don't know. There were times in my life uh, when I said, is this worth it? Uh, hallelujah, God. Uh, and I begin to cry uh, in my spirit. Uh, Jesus, I, I, Lord, laid me out on the ground. I, he laid me out on the floor. I, I stretched out on the floor. I, thank you, Jesus. I, oh, God. And I begin to cry. I said, Lord, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God, for not giving up on me. I, thank you, Jesus. And as I got up on my feet, I, I begin to praise the Lord. You see, there wasn't nobody there but me and the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can I just back up just a little while? Thank you, Jesus. A couple of the mothers of the church came in to shut in. Thank you, Jesus. And they just sit with me. Thank you, Jesus. We didn't even pray, but we began to talk. And they began to tell me how much they love me. How much they love me. How much they love the first lady. Hallelujah, God. And this joy that I have, I know that the world can give it to me. This joy that I have, I know the world can take it away. Hallelujah, God. And as I lay down on the floor, thank you, Jesus. Can I just give a little graphic for you? I had water in my eyes. Was running down my nose. Can I say that? I'm not ashamed that God's doing something for me. Thank you, God, that I could have given up a long time ago. But God told me to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Is there anybody here that God told you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? When you stand still, that means you wait on God. Hallelujah, God. I know sometimes we get tired, we get troubled, but if you stand still, somebody say stand still and wait on the Lord. When you wait on the Lord, your change is gonna come. Hallelujah, God. I remember what Hallelujah Best Burner said. What Joe said, though you slay me, though you slay me, yet will I trust you? I trust the Lord with all my heart. And I stop leading to my own understanding. And I begin to acknowledge him in all my ways. And when I acknowledge him, he directed my path. Is there anybody here that can correct your path? Yeah. 
what's going on. Hallelujah, God. Sometimes your problems, they look big to you. Can I, can I tell you something? But when you got to run it back, you got to full back. You might get the ball, but if you got to run it back and you got a full back, thank you, Jesus. The full back will block for you. Thank you, Jesus. And when that cold closes up, you got a line in. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get a couple of brothers? Come on real quick. Give me two brothers real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to preach this thing. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The opposition is in front of me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to figure out which way to go. Thank you, Jesus. Can I go to the left? Can I go to the right? Thank you, Jesus. But all I got to do is wait on the signal. Sometimes, if you move too fast, they call that what? A false start. Sometimes you have a false start. And when you get a false start, you get penalized. You have to take your back about five yards. Hallelujah, God. But when the quarterback, the quarterback is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. The quarterback is Jesus. And he calls the play. Yes, he do. He said, one, for the father. He said, two, for the son. He said, three, for the Holy Ghost. And while we're walking down the line, I can see all possession in front of me. But I got my back right here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not scared no more. I'm not afraid no more. I might be 110 pounds, but I'm not afraid. And I got this big old man here. And I got this big old man here. Jesus, but you can make it to the finish line, and that is our goal. 